Today, lesson 44A, solving multi-step equations. And our big focus as of late has been solving equations. Um, in the previous couple of lessons, it was solving, we were solving two-step equations. Typically, when we're solving multi-step, that usually means more than two steps. So today, solve multi-step equations by combining like terms and using the distributive property and also checking our solutions. And then along the way, stating the properties that we used, like the addition property of equality and so on, uh, stating the properties that we used to actually solve the problem. So a little bit of background knowledge, like usual. Remember how to combine like terms. I know all of you are pros at that now. One of the things I like to do is if I've got multiple things I'm combining together, I like to use shapes to separate the ideas of the like terms. Um, so we've done all kinds of combining like terms, including with fractions and decimals mixed together like in this one. These are all problems from previous lessons. And so we are all pretty good at that uh, at this point. And then we've also talked about how to solve two-step equations like this where we would use the addition property of equality. And we thought of this as the inverse of subtracting 7. Then we divide both sides by 4. And we have done a few where our solutions did not come out to be an integer, and that's okay. So we just write our answer as a mixed number. All right, so here is our first new problem for today. And as we've started each of these new ideas, I've shown you with tiles first, and that's exactly what I'm going to do right here. So this is an example, and I like the fact that some of you have drawn pictures of tiles. Now, this gets kind of messy because there's so many. But what this situation represents is it represents, uh, I can see 4x right there, positive 4x, and then two negative x's, and then seven unit tiles. And then over here, I don't even really want to count them, but I think there's 19 there. Is that right? Yeah. All right, so there's 19 there. So in order to solve this, the first thing that we would want to do is we would want to deal with the fact that we've got some zero pairs here that we can uh, get rid of some x's here. So I have a zero pair here, so technically those two are gone. And in terms of mathematics, that would be like combining like terms, the 4x minus the 2x. So I'm still left with 2x here. And what I'm trying to figure out here is how many of the unit tiles there will be for each of those x tiles. And so, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take away these four. Didn't mean to do that. So those are gone now because of the zero pairs. And I'm going to introduce some negative tiles here. And I would need seven of them to create our zero pairs. And I think it becomes clear why we don't do tiles on all these problems. But now that I introduce seven uh, negative unit tiles there, I have to do the same thing over here. And so I can do this, pull those over here. There's three, and then I'll do another three, and do one more here. And so now I've got some unit uh, some zero pairs that I can get rid of all of these right here. Those are gone. And then I can do the same thing over here. So I have seven negative and seven positive. And so now I have something that looks like this. So now what I have is something that's much more manageable. I have two x's on one side and it looks like 12 on the other side. So what does each, how many unit tiles go with each x tile? Six. Six? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And that should be very clear. We've got si these six can go with, these six right here can go with this one, and these six could go with this one. So we can see that x does equal six. But we're going to do this via mathematics. So in a situation like this, we should combine like terms. And that gives us 2x plus 7 equals 19, which is what we had after we dealt with the uh, zero pair of the x tiles. And then, of course, it's now a two-step equation. Subtract 7 from both sides, and then divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 6 for the solution. Okay? All right, everybody try. 
the official number one. Uh, first thing we need to do is combine like terms. So I have the 5x and the negative 2x right there. That makes 3x. And then from there, it's a two-step equation. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides because that's the inverse property, and that's using the subtraction property of equality. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. That is the division property of equality. And we did that because that's the inverse to multiplying by 3. So supposedly I get a solution of x equals 5, and there's only one way to know for sure whether that's right or wrong, and that's to check. So I'm going to fill in the, the areas where the x's were with the 5 that I claim to be the solution. And now I'll use uh, a little bit of math here, order of operations, and I end up with 25 minus 10 plus 6, and that is 21. So 21 is equal to 21, so that means we end up with a true statement. So x is certainly x is uh, certainly equal to uh, 5 for number 1. All right, everybody try number 2. All right, so number 2. We need to combine like terms first. So I have a positive 1.6x and a negative 1x. When I combine those two together, that gives me 6 tenths x or 0.6x and then minus 7 uh, equals 18. I'm going to add 7 to both sides because that is the inverse operation to subtracting 7. Uh, and that would be using the addition property of equality. From there, I need to divide both sides by 0 0.6 because that is the inverse property to multiplying by 0 0.6. And I use the division property of equality. And now, somewhere off to the side, we would have to figure out what 25 divided by 0 0.6 is. Uh, most of you left your answer like this. I actually prefer the mixed number equivalent. Uh, they both represent the same number, but at some point uh, we really want to get in the habit of writing our answers as mixed numbers. But either one is okay. Now, which one would be best if I checked my answer, though? You know, and this is one of those reasons, Caleb. The mixed number. Yeah, the mixed number. So that's one reason why the mixed number version might be better for some of us. And so when I check, you can see, after a bit of math there, that we end up with a true statement. So 41 and 2 thirds is certainly the solution. All right, number three. Now we have one with a bunch of mixed numbers, but it doesn't change what we're supposed to do. If we have uh, like terms on the same side of the equal symbol, which we do on the right-hand side, we need to combine them together. And then after that, we're left with a two-step equation in which we solve the normal way. So everybody try number three. Brooke, lead us through what you did. Okay. So I got 24 for the denominator. Okay, so let's just let's pretend like we have the, all the common denominator. I didn't do that until I needed to do that. So what, what did you do then? I subtracted uh, 60 over 24 from 40 over 24. Why, why did you do that? Um, the 2 and 1 half. Okay, so you did not combine like terms first? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what I was trying to get from you, yeah. I would have combined like terms first. You don't have to. You could go ahead and subtract 2 and a half from both sides, but... All right, so then from there, you subtracted your 2 and a half, which what I did was I converted the 1 and 2 thirds to 5 thirds, and then my 2 and a half to 5 halves, because I knew I was going to have to eventually anyway. So at that point, you subtracted the 2 and a half from both sides. Okay, good. And then what would you do? I got... Okay, so I mean those are equivalent to what I have. So then, what did you do? Um, divided, and I got uh, the solution at y equals negative one. Okay, and that sounds right to me. Leaving it the way that I left it, I would divide both sides by five eighths, and negative five six. Remember, it's top number divided by bottom number. We found out last week a couple of you were doing that backwards. Top number divided by bottom number. So negative five six divided by 5 eighths, and that is negative. Some of you left it improper, which is fine, uh, 
or negative 1 and 1 third. And if I check, you will see that it has to be right. All right, now we have a problem where we have a decimal and a fraction and integers. Go ahead and solve. I mean, the idea is with equations like this, this is nothing new. The only new thing is that we have a multi-step equation because we'll, we will eventually have to combine like terms. That's the only new thing. All right, first thing we should do is combine like terms. In my opinion, that doesn't mean that you couldn't subtract 1.5 from both sides first because you obviously could do that. I like to combine like terms first. 5w and negative 2 thirds w, that is 4 and 1 third w, but I would convert that to an improper fraction. And then the second thing is, I think in this step I go ahead and convert, yes, 1.25 is 1 and 1 fourth, and we should all know that. And so I went ahead and converted that to 5 fourths. And then from there, subtracted 5 fourths from both sides. Uh, negative 8 minus 5 fourths, that is negative 9 and 1 fourth, which is negative 37 fourths. And then, of course, divide both sides by 13 thirds. And I mentioned this in the last problem. But remember, this right here means negative 37 over 4 divided by uh, 13 thirds. Top number divided by bottom number. Uh, some of you, I noticed when I walked around, some of you jumped straight to the multiplication ver version of it, and that's fine. Just make sure that you're doing uh, the right thing there. But in this problem, we end up with a solution of negative 2 and 750 seconds. And I could tell by the looks on some of your faces uh, the ugliness of that mixed number, you weren't quite sure if you had did it, you know, if you had done things correctly, uh, but you did. And so if we substitute that in for W into the original equation and check, it gets even uglier, but we can see that it must be the solution. All right, next. Sometimes we have a multi-step equation where we would have to use the distributive property first. And so in this equation we would multiply the quantity of y minus 2 by 6, like we've done hundreds of times with the distributive property. And that would give us 6y minus 12 equals 60. And now we have a two-step equation. So we add 12 to both sides. And I know at this point we know the reasons why. And then divide both sides by 6. And we end up with y equals 12 for the solution. All right, all of you, please do number five. All right, Josh, what do you think the solution is? Uh, M equals eight? Yeah. Okay, and look, if you substitute it in right there, which would be, you know, kind of considered checking, we would have 8 minus 4 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. So it must be right. It must be right. But in order to show our steps, we would have to use the distributive property, which gives us 16 equals 4m minus 16. From there, add 16 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 4, and we do end up with a solution of m equals 8. All right, and if we check, as I already kind of showed you, it works. Number 6. Sometimes you have to use the distributive property and then you have a two-step equation, but sometimes you have to use the distributive property and then combine like terms. So I'm going to kind of get us started in uh, number six. So the first thing we should do is use the distributive property. And once I use the distributive property, I end up with this. 0 0.3 times x is 0 0.3x. 0 0.3 times 1.2 is 0 0.36. And then we have whatever was left in the equation. So now I used the distributive property. Now I need to combine like terms. So I'm going to let you finish. And I'll get back with you in another minute and a half or so. All right, so we combine like terms right here. 0.3x and a negative 0.1x is 0.2x. From that point, we're going to subtract 3 point, or excuse me, 0.36 from both sides. 0 0.8 minus 0 0.36 is 0 0.44. And then we divide both sides by 0 0.2, and we end up with a solution of 2.2. And if we check, we will see 
that we get the right answer. And I would not use the distributive property when checking, by the way. I would use the order of operations. So I would add 2.2 and 1.2 together because then I'm only having to deal with that one, well, it's not really a difficult multiplication, but really only one reasonably difficult multiplication. That's a 0 0.3 times 3.4. And then we can see that we get a true statement. So 2.2 is the solution. All right, last problem for today. Solve this multi-step equation. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to use the distributive property. Uh, eight thirds times negative three and a half. I would have converted the negative three and a half to negative seven halves first. Uh, but that gives me negative 28 thirds K. And then eight thirds times one is eight thirds. And then, of course, I have my plus three halves equals, and I went ahead and converted 41 and a half to 83 halves. And from there, I combined like terms, 8 thirds and 3 halves. Nothing difficult about that. Uh, that would give me 25 sixths. Then we need to subtract 25 sixths from both sides. Uh, 83 halves minus 25 sixths. There should be nothing difficult about that. So now I have negative 28 thirds K equals 112 thirds. I caught like three or four of you. You, had, you were perfect to right here, and then when you divided, you, what I've called before, you know, I referred to it as dumping a negative. Somewhere along the line, you lose your negative. Don't lose track of the fact that you are dividing by a negative 28 thirds. And so remember, it is always top number divided by bottom number. So 112 over 3 divided by negative 28 thirds. You'll need to rewrite that as a multiplication problem and then uh, multiply that out. But regardless, you should end up with a solution of k equals negative 4. And if we check, we will see that it most certainly is the solution. Okay? All right, we are finished for today.